the mountains of the Iberian Peninsula, the last nomadic shepherds survive. They're heirs to an ancestral way of life that has allowed for the coexistence of both the wolf and domestic livestock. Nowadays, both wolves and herdsmen are in danger of extinction, victims of today's model of intensive food production. Nevertheless, modern society is now turning its gaze towards the rural world and is giving special value to natural products. The wolf, a traditional enemy, may be a lifeline for extensive livestock production. We've always taken great joy in working in the great outdoors, surrounded by nature. Every day is special, exciting, and surprising. No two days are ever the same. We're able to revel in the sounds, smells and images that the countryside offers us. It's a privilege to be able to immortalize those unique moments through film so that other people can also enjoy them. Now the time has come to face a new challenge, to film wolves in their natural habitat. A female wolf, very cautious and wary, particularly caught our attention. We may have found the den and its burrow, but we had to confirm our suspicions. Indeed, the wolf had her cubs there.
When the weather is fine, the cubs go out to the playground to bask in the sun. In areas where there are bears, the wolves are born in rocky caves, deep and narrow, where the bears cannot dig. This prevents bears from killing the cubs. In the first days of breeding, the dominant breeding pair does not let the rest of the clan approach the lair. The small size of the cubs makes them easy prey for eagles or other winged predators. The mother wolf does not lower her guard, not even for a second. She's uneasy when she sees her puppies exposed in the open field and in broad daylight. She'll have to use some ruse to get them back to the shelter. Though there's always a rebel in every group. Now it was time to enjoy ourselves. Everything was ready for us to start our work with enthusiasm. We couldn't have imagined the nasty surprise the day had in store for us. The shepherd confirmed that his 12 mastiffs displaced the wolf packs from the places where his flock was traveling. We were surprised to discover these shepherds who are not at all afraid of the wolves. The image of the little cubs was etched into our memory. What would have become of them?
Like every year since time immemorial, the shepherds move their livestock. They travel from the lower, hotter plains, where they've already exhausted the season's pastures, to the mountain passes. There they find fresh meadows so that their cattle can feed in summer. With the first rains, the grass will be reborn and the shepherds will return to the valleys. Juan, the shepherd, explained that the wolves are allies of the rancher. The resource he exploits is grass. And the only species that controls wild herbivores, such as roe deer, deer, chamois, or mountain goats, is the wolf. Wolves protect the grass year-round until the nomadic ranchers return in summer. We'd lost the trail of our wolves and headed back south. We continued with our lives, capturing the natural world on film. We were frustrated. Our project was looking likely to become an unfinished story. The sight of the flocks of sheep in the vastness of the marsh made us think of returning to film the wolves. And so we decided to go back to the mountains. One told us that wolf packs rarely have more than eight individuals, while he has a group of 12 mastiffs. His dogs outnumber the wolves. The fiercest mastiffs, those who must face the wolf in the event of an attack, are equipped with carlancas, spiked dog collars, which prevent the dog from being bitten in the neck. Another important task is to gather livestock at night in a sheepfold. By combining both actions, the shepherd had no problem with the wolves. Wolves don't usually hunt cows. Their large size and sharp horns allow them to repel the attacks of the canines. Calves, however, are easy prey for the wolf. With their cunning, the wolves are able to separate them from their mother and kill them. A cowboy, a friend of Juan, has built an anti-wolf fence. The fence, two meters high, is surrounded by electrified wire. If a wolf tries to jump it, it will receive a brief, harmless electric shock. The wolf will remember to never touch the fence again. Cows can go out to graze, leaving their young protected inside. And they can enter freely through a corridor and double swinging doors. A wolf will rarely dare to enter a human facility like this. With this fence, the farmer has reduced wolf attacks by 
Autumn came early, and we resumed our work. Juan had proposed introducing us to other shepherds, his companions, to give us their view on the relationship between the ranchers and the wolves. We decided to build a barbican to evaluate its effectiveness. On the rope, we hung all kinds of elements that would make the wolf suspicious, even small sacks containing human hair collected from the village hairdresser. The whole rope was rubbed down with mothballs, imbuing it with a strong smell. We placed video cameras with motion sensors, which would be activated by any animal that approached them. Now, we just had to wait. The existence of tools such as barbicans are the result of a centuries-old struggle between wolf and man. And it shows that with a little imagination, it is possible to defend cattle from the wolf. These meeting places are enclaves that wolves establish to regroup with their own, greet each other, play, and strengthen bonds of union. It's the point the cubs know that they must return to in case they get lost during their escapades. The cubs had grown a lot at this time and were about the same size as their parents. They were playful and happy. They're located next to open spaces, which the shepherds called camperas, in which wolves play and interact with each other. In the surroundings, there is usually dense vegetation where the pack lies and rests. As the song says, the wolf hides her cubs behind a broom, a kind of bush, with which these cleaning utensils were once manufactured. One day, we had the opportunity to find the pack after they had hunted a roe deer. While dominant individuals and some cubs eat, other members of the clan have to wait their turn.
The wolf is a social hunter. His way of life revolves around the group. Everyone depends on each other. Everyone plays a role and always looks out for others. The pack, clan or breeding group has an organization. There's a breeding pair, which are the dominant wolves. They're the strongest, physically and psychologically, with a more marked character than the others. The rest of the specimens that make up the group are cubs born that year, sub-adults of previous years, and the odd adult wolf. The reproductive male who is in command is the strongest and boasts more experience and more character. We didn't know exactly how many individuals were part of the clan. We were able to confirm that there were at least eight individuals. During the days of filming, we also enjoyed the company of the neighbors of the wolf. A large male watches over his harem, made up of females and young from last year. In the autumn, we witnessed the chamois during the rut. As he urinates, he shakes himself so that the urine, laden with fragrant pheromones, permeates his sides. It's his signature. Although there are always others willing to expel him from his domain. In most cases, these disputes are solved with vertiginous downhill chases. The clan is always on the lookout for dinner. A deer has left the forest to graze. He limps. It's possible that he has tuberculosis. When an animal suffers from this disease, at an advanced stage, it presents inflammation in the joints. He is terminally ill. The mechanism by which tuberculosis spreads causes the animal to expel large quantities of infectious bacteria. This is what scientists call a super excreta. The animals that eat or drink from where the super excreta has been will have a high probability of contracting tuberculosis. Wolves eliminate the super excretas. They're easier prey as they have trouble running. where there are wolves, the incidence of tuberculosis is lower. Therefore, the wolves save the ranchers a lot of money.
The wolf is a social animal. They live in groups. The social structure is what maintains group cohesion. To preserve this structure, a hierarchical order must be established. Within the groups, there are relationships that bring certain wolves closer with one another. They form pairs of gregarious wolves. In such large groups, tensions are constant. One of the wolves paws and scratches the ground and raises its tail, questioning the leadership of the dominant male. Subordinate individuals always aspire to take the place of the dominant wolf. Displays of power are made through gestures. Thus, they transmit the mood and the level of aggressiveness. Two wolves in the center are challenging each other. Another submissive wolf with its ears folded, bends down and caresses one of the opponents, trying to reduce tension and calm them down. of lower status decide to leave the reproductive group. From now on, they will roam the land independently in search of other groups into which they can integrate. They are known as peripheral or floating wolves. Lone wolves do not have the same capacity a pack has to hunt wild herbivores, so they become scavengers and opportunists. And sometimes they will attack the cattle they find unprotected. In Spain, many of these attacks are perpetrated by feral dogs and are unjustly attributed to the wolves. A ranger neglected to collect three sheep last night. Lonely wolves or feral dogs have not missed the opportunity to take advantage of easy prey. On these occasions, the answer is always the same.
We found out that in the village, they'd killed a wolf. Juan informed us that as a result of the attack, they'd killed the clan's dominant female. Without this female's experience, the pack is unstructured and will have trouble hunting wild herbivores. The cubs as young as seven months old still do not have enough experience to help their father hunt. We witness the effectiveness of the Mastiffs in repelling wolf attacks. Attacking a herd protected by Mastiffs is not a good idea. It could exacerbate the clan's problems. Autumn is the deer's mating season. Some deer, exhausted after the fight for a partner, can be easy game for wolves. The pack discovers a deer on the opposite slope. They're going to try. They start from an unfavorable position. To reach the deer, they must run uphill. Meanwhile, the experienced older deer chooses to flee downhill. Direct pursuit does not work. The experience of another adult wolf is needed in order to lay an ambush. The deer takes refuge in the thicket of the bushes. Vultures are a good reference for finding food, even if it is carrion. The pack has lost its ability to hunt, and they must take advantage of any opportunity that comes their way. Vultures and wolves have always competed for food. Getting a bite becomes a race against the clock for everyone.
the male and one of the cubs go out to look for food. Scavenging might be a good option. It seems that they have arrived late. The group reaches a meadow while the first snowflakes of the season begin to fall. In these areas, it's usually easy to find small mammals such as voles. These rodents become a pest in some areas. The presence of predators such as the wolf help to keep them at bay. They're a source of protein, which cannot be disregarded, although it's not enough to fill their stomachs. to keep looking. The storm rages and one of the cubs discovers a scent. They've had the good fortune to find the remains of a rabbit. The dominant male and the strongest cub share the spoils. Our cameras bear witness to the critical situation that the pack is going through. We felt conflicted. We couldn't help but feel sorry and worried about the future of the cubs. And yet we felt blessed to be able to experience their story firsthand.
Domestic livestock live with the wolf with hardly any conflicts. Both sides keep their distance and the wolves are aware of how unwise it is to kill cattle. Snowfall drives the group down into the valley. It's a dangerous move, as they could cross the territory of other wolf packs or even encounter mastiffs, which would present serious problems. The dominant male comes across a scent. Without a doubt, it's another wolf. A fight with a neighboring clan could be lethal to the group. It's good news, because it's a wandering female. It's a golden opportunity. It's exactly what the pack needs. the clan accepts the new partner. We're surprised to see how the female reacts with confidence and assumes the leadership of the group. The pack has six members once again. The experience of the new female will allow the group to plot new hunting strategies. The wolves pick up a new scent. They decide to move to higher ground and take a little roundabout to assess the situation. Wolves have a facial language. Just by looking at each other, they will know what the strategy will be. The adult female moves ahead of the group to lie in wait for the ambush. The rest of the pack surrounds the boar in order to direct it into the bushes where the hidden wolf is located.
The sheep reach the southern valleys, leaving behind the mountains of the wolves. The first human ranchers accompanied their newly domesticated herds following their natural migrations. That's how transhumans, the nomadic lifestyle of the early ranchers, was born. An anthropological and cultural heritage that, after having survived millennia, were on the verge of letting disappear. We also toured these landscapes for the last time, which brought back many memories of the moments we experienced during filming. We're happy to have found that coexistence between the wolf and livestock is possible. And we are leaving committed to seeing that both wolves and ranchers do not disappear from our countryside. <laughs>